On the 21st of June, 2020, a 14-year-old South Belfast boy named Noah Donahoe went missing for six days after riding a bike and then setting off on foot. After a massive search operation that also involved the local community, they finally discovered his body. It was found in a storm drain complex in the North Belfast area at 9.45am on Saturday the 27th of June 2020. The system was inaccessible earlier in the week due to high tides. On the day Noah went missing, he was seen riding his Black Apollo mountain bike from his home in the South Belfast area at around 5.30pm. At 5.57pm, a witness saw a boy matching Noah's description fall off his bike and hitting his head on the ground. He then got up, discarded all of his clothing and rode only for a short period thereafter. It was believed that Noah had left his bicycle behind and then proceeded on foot. He was last seen at 6.10pm, going down the side of a house towards a wooded area in the Northwood Linear Park. His family have said those actions were completely out of character, and it's believed that the fall from his bike caused him to sustain an injury, resulting in him feeling disorientated and confused. His helmet, runners, hoodie, bike, and mobile phone were located almost immediately. However, it took until Friday when a member of the public located his khaki rucksack, which contained a laptop and a book. The items were taken away by specialist teams for forensic analysis. The locals were urged to check their gardens and sheds for the boy. It was unclear why he travelled three miles to the north of the city, away from home in the first place. Noah's mum, Fiona Donahoe, expressed how her heart was broken and thanked the community for the support in this difficult time. Noah was a student at St. Malachi's College. He was industrious, intelligent, and often involved himself in extracurriculum activities such as sports and playing the cello. No foul play was suspected in the case. Tracy Bird was a 14-year-old girl. She vanished on the 7th of March 1983 after a mother's boyfriend, Peter Greenwald, dropped her off at Ben Salem High School in Pennsylvania. Unbeknownst to her mother or Paul, she kept a secret that she was suspended from school and wasn't allowed to attend classes until her mother met with the principal. Immediately after being dropped off, she tried getting her school friends to skip school with her, but they wouldn't listen. This was the last time she was seen ever again. Initially, she was considered a runaway because she'd left home once before after arguing with her mother, but that was only for one night. There have been many possible reported sightings of her, but this was thought only to be of someone that closely resembled her. Tracy was dating a couple of guys at the time. The night before she disappeared, she told a friend of hers that she may have been pregnant though this was never confirmed. On the 18th of October, 1983, almost seven months after Tracy vanished, her mother Jean Bird also went missing. She'd broken up with Paul, and her body was found later in Blackbird State Forest in Newcastle County, Delaware. She'd been suffocated and had heavy duty tape wrapped around her face and mouth. In 1980, Paul had a troubled relationship with Jean and had forcefully taken her with him in a car, threatening her life if she didn't come along. Paul was unsurprisingly a prime suspect. He was questioned and found guilty of taking Jean's life. However, whilst trying to extract further information about Tracy's whereabouts, he proclaimed his innocence and stated he was never connected to her disappearance. In 1986, just one day prior to Paul's sentencing, he took a large dose of medication after he became overwhelmed and he passed away in his cell. The runaway theory was discarded because it would have been likely that Tracy would have attended her mother's funeral, as they were very close. In January of 1988, a man walking his dog found a pregnant woman's remains in a well at the site of a defunct distillery. The investigators had limited information on Tracy, the authorities didn't know her blood type, they lacked her fingerprints, and they only had an x-ray of her baby molar tooth. Using the technology and information they had at the time, the police concluded that the body wasn't Tracy's, the forensic science of 1988 concluded that the unidentified remains to be that of a white woman, between 100 and 120 pounds, and between the ages of 17 to 23. It was estimated that the remains had been there for anywhere up to five years before they were found. A reconstruction was completed of what the woman may have looked like. It is suspected that someone had taken Tracy's life. It could have been one of the guys that had possibly impregnated her. To this day, the case remains unsolved.
On the evening of the 7th of July 1984, seven-year-old Louis McAlee mysteriously disappeared. He lived in a second-floor apartment in Allendale, Pennsylvania, with three other siblings. He was friendly and loved to talk, but had trouble at school. He suffered from a short attention span and hyperactivity, so he took Ritalin to help control his condition. That afternoon, he arrived at home from school, and his mother was in hospital having surgery at the time. He explained to his aunt, who was babysitting, that he was going to visit a friend. It was believed that friend was an elderly woman that he often saw who lived a couple of doors away. At 4pm, a local hot dog shop owner noted that Louis came into his shop and he told him that two teenage boys were teasing and chasing after him. He spent some time there browsing to escape from the bullies until he finally left at 4.45pm. Witnesses observed him walking about a block from his house and his parents believe that he was on his way to visit the elderly lady. Another witness account reported seeing him talking to an unidentified man and woman in a park near Jordan Creek at approximately 4.30pm, one block from his residence, which conflicts with the time he was with the shop owner. This story was unconfirmed, but it was not ruled out as a scenario in the investigation either. He was never seen alive again. Louis liked staying out late, and it wasn't uncommon for him to arrive at home at 9.30 at night. The parents became concerned around this time when he hadn't come back and went out into the street looking for him. They searched and called out, but they received no response or saw any sign of him. The parents contacted the police at 11.10pm to report him missing. An extensive search followed, however, no trace of him was found. Louis was one of the first missing children to be featured on milk cartons, grocery bags and billboards. There were several false reported sightings of the boy, including one of his cousin. Louis enjoyed playing near water, particularly near Jordan Creek and Lehigh River at the time of his disappearance. Shortly before he vanished, he mentioned that he would like to visit Dorney Park. His parents took a polygraph test and were ruled out as suspects in their son's disappearance. Rumours started surfacing that they had mistreated or neglected Louis, but the social services investigated and discovered the allegations to be unfounded. The teenage boys were also questioned and cleared. Prior to his disappearance in January of 1984, Louis told his parents, a psychologist and a school nurse, that he'd been inappropriately touched by a couple named Frank and Elizabeth. The accounts of the alleged incident differed. Once he said it happened on the railroad tracks near Jordan Street and Lehigh River, and another time in an apartment in Allentown, where he said Frank and Elizabeth had taken him before driving him back to his own neighbourhood. Louis mentioned that the couple threatened to injure him if he told anyone about what had happened. The police were alerted, but they didn't have enough evidence to investigate the matter further, as the last names and addresses weren't provided. It's unclear whether the incidents really occurred, or if it had anything to do with Louis's disappearance half a year later. In 1988, David Riggs, a rogue private investigator from New York, claimed to have established an organisation called Search 7 to look for McAlee and other children. He was arrested in West Virginia after he approached five young boys and offered their money to pose wearing bikini underwear. All the boys declined. He was arrested for attempted abduction and indecent acts and sentenced to a year in prison. He was investigated for a possible connection to Louis's disappearance. However, no evidence could be found. Eleven months after Louis disappeared, his family moved into the elderly female friend's house and she moved into a retirement home. McAlee's family wanted to be at a place he knew and might return to. He had often played at the residence and had dreamed of living there one day. Louis's parents, however, were unable to repay the loan for the home and relocated to Effort in Pennsylvania in 1989. The parents believe he might be alive, but feel that he may not remember who he is. To this day, he remains missing and is suspected of being abducted by a non-family member, and the case remains unsolved.